Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Windows Phone Corporate Vice President, Terry Meyerson. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to our Windows Phone Summit. I'm Terry Meyerson. I lead the Windows Phone division at Microsoft. I want to thank you for being here today. This year, Microsoft has reimagined Windows. With the introduction of Windows 8, we have new silicon, new user experiences, a new development platform, and new devices. Well, today, for the first time, we are here to preview the next chapter in our Windows story, Windows Phone 8. And before we do that, let's talk about how we got to where we are today. It was three and a half years ago when a small group of us decided we needed to reimagine the Windows mobile experience. We looked at everything that was available to our customers at that time, and we knew there was a better way. From that work, we distilled three principles that have guided us every day since. The first was that Windows Phone was going to be a more personal experience. We wanted Windows Phone to be an expression of the user. If you pick up a Windows phone of any of our customers and look at that start screen, you are going to learn so much about the people in their lives and their interests. Our second guiding principle was that the experience on our phones were going to be most relevant to the user. This phone knows so much about you through its sensors and the content on the device. We challenged ourselves to bring information and experiences that were most relevant to the user right to them. And third, we wanted to deliver the most connected experience that we could, betting on the cloud to bring the user's content to them, as well as storing it back there for peace of mind. From this, we have the birth of Metro and our first Windows Phone devices a little over 18 months ago. Now, when we want to understand how Windows Phone customers have responded to, to our work, one place we go is Windows Phone's, I'm sorry, Amazon's phone marketplace. Amazon lets us sort all of their phones by users' reviews and ratings. When we went there yesterday to build this slide, the top three phones from all of Amazon's customers were Windows Phones. Five of the top six were Windows phones. Seven of the top nine were Windows phones. Seven of the top nine. You know, frankly, it's humbling to work on a product which customers have reviewed so highly. The customer reviews talk about the beautiful Metro experience. They talk about the buttery smooth performance. My favorite quote from a customer, Windows Phone is a breath of fresh air. So what does the future hold for Windows Phone? Well, we're going to start sharing that with you today. Today is our Windows Phone 8 platform preview, where we will share those aspects of the platform which our developer partners need to know now. And to get started with that, I'd like to introduce someone who was there with me three and a half years ago when we built this vision, Joe Belfiore. Thank you. Good morning. Hello, everyone. It's good to be here with you uh, and to pick up where Terry left off and sort of leap into where we're going with Windows Phone this fall. Um, as Terry mentioned, I was one of the people who were there when we reset our efforts with Windows Phone 7. And at the time, um, I was lucky enough to get to come to Mobile World Congress and sort of describe what we were changing and show the Metro user experience for the first time, talk about how we changed the developer platform and the way we were 
altering our approach to working with hardware vendors. But at the time we were doing this transition, there were a lot of things that we were trying to improve and change. There was one that we weren't able to get done, although we started the work really early. And that was the fact that our core technology, the, the heart of the operating system, was based on Windows CE. And although that was great for the low-cost, low-power phones that had preceded Windows Phone 7, as phones get more powerful, we have been feeling more and more that we could benefit from an upgrade at our core. So let me just jump in today and tell you the big announcement that we have today is that the future of Windows Phone is about a shared Windows core and that Windows Phone 8 this holiday will ship with a shared core inside that's common code between Windows Phone 8 and Windows 8. Yeah, we're pretty excited about that, too. So, so uh, let me explain a little bit about what that means, because I'm getting into some sort of technical implementation here. And what's interesting is to get a sense for not only what, what that means technically, but what its effects are. When we say shared Windows core, we're referring to a set of components that include the kernel, networking, the file system, uh, multimedia, graphics support, all those kinds of things. And what we're going to do today is take you through the implications of that shared core, because really it changes what the platform is about. And that's a platform for software developers and for hardware makers, and it affects how all these people are, are exposed to Windows Phone. And that core technology, which is shared between Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8, has as sort of its, its, its heritage the Windows kernel that's been around and is in use today by over 1.3 billion people. So this is a well-tested piece of software. It has high familiarity for many people in the value chain, and now that familiarity and performance and reliability uh, is all going to come to Windows Phone. So let's talk in a little bit more specifics about what this means for various audiences of Windows Phone. For consumers, this new shared core is going to mean a much greater choice in hardware. Uh, this new shared core technology scales down and it scales up in a big way. So we're going to see a much wider range of phones with a wider range of capabilities at a wider range of price points. It also means some new experiences that you'll get that cross over between your phone and your PC. It also means a huge amount for both end users and developers in terms of the kinds of apps that we expect to see on Windows Phone 8. With a shared common core, developers who are working on Windows 8 have an incredibly easy transition to Windows Phone. And developers who've done work for Windows Phone already can move their apps quickly and easily to Windows 8. And in that situation, everyone benefits. It's better for consumers, it's better for developers, and it's better for our hardware partners as well because the ecosystem grows and gets more healthy. The hardware partners in particular benefit from the shared core in some really interesting ways. Um, at the heart of that shared core, the kernel exposes a driver model for many of the devices and components in a phone or a slate or a laptop or a PC. When that code is in common, Many of the companies that build those parts and have to author software drivers for those parts can author those drivers one time, build them to high quality, and expose that hardware goodness across a very wide range of devices, from the beefiest desktop PC to a thin, easy-to-use, great battery life slate, down to a low-cost Windows phone. Again, everyone benefits. The quality improves, the performance improves, the time to market improves, it's efficient for the ecosystem and good for consumers, developers, and hardware partners. Now, what I'm going to do for about the next 45 minutes or so is take you through a little bit of a tour of eight new platform announcements that form really the foundation of Windows Phone 8 and deliver features and benefits to all of those audiences on the basis of this new shared core. What we are not doing today is disclosing all of the end user features. We have some pretty cool things to talk about that you're not going to get to hear about today. What we're going to do instead is focus on the platform and how that improves things for consumers, developers, and hardware vendors. So keep that in mind as I take you through the tour of eight. We'll start out, number one, Windows Phone 8 will support the latest and greatest hardware this fall. 
The shared core with its kernel um, in particular has been optimized for, over the course of many years, multi-core chips. In fact, the shared kernel that we'll be shipping in Windows Phone 8 has already been run on 64 core machines on Windows desktop PCs and servers. This is a great architecture that's been optimized over years, and the experience that people have had on Windows Phone single core devices in the past is gonna get much, much better as it runs on dual core devices and beyond in the future. The work that we've been doing so far in building Windows Phone 8 has been focused on dual core for this fall, and we're doing all the kinds of optimization and performance enhancements on multi-core first for Windows 8 devices so that consumers get the real benefit of battery life and great performance on their new Windows Phone 8 devices. The next thing we're doing in terms of hardware enhancements is scaling up our support for screen resolutions. When we launched Windows Phone 7, we picked one screen resolution. And we did that in large part to give the ecosystem focus on a single target. So it would be easier for ISVs to implement apps that would be known to work great on every Windows phone. We feel that now is the right time to expand that screen resolution, so we're moving up and adding two new resolutions, both in high definition. We'll be adding a standard 720p, screen resolution, and the even higher res WXGA, you can sort of think of that as 720p plus, with its 768 uh, lines of resolution when you're in landscape mode. We made a very intentional choice here and have made sure that we have the graphics hardware support so that all of the existing Windows Phone 7.5 apps will run great with no modification on these new resolutions. If you're a developer, your app is gonna run and look terrific, and I'm gonna show you some examples of this later. The resolution change is invisible to you. Now, of course, if you want to go exploit the new resolution, you're welcome to do that, and we make that possible, but it's not necessary. As an end user, all the things that you would expect to work still work, but your experience just gets better. Third, we're introducing removable micro SD support as a core part of the platform. And this core micro SD support spans both the PC and the phone. The scenarios are valuable both to consumers but also to developers and to hardware vendors. Um, what this enables that's different than what Windows Phone 7.5 has today is that an end user can add a micro SD card months after they buy the phone, expanding their storage, and then they can use it to transfer content from their PC to their phone, from phone to phone, it can be used as a distribution vehicle for apps, and it supports all these things in a very natural, integrated way in the Metro experience. We didn't want to deliver this feature until we could do it in a way that would be easy to use, predictable, and high performant, and we think we've got that nailed in Windows Phone 8. Not only does this help consumers, but it helps our hardware vendors and mobile operators as well, because it lets them range and stock phones in stores that are lower cost at time of purchase, because they don't need to put as much storage in the phone to begin with. If a user needs it, they can always add it later. So these are Three important things that are going to help Windows Phone scale up and scale down on great new hardware this fall. I mentioned some of the core technologies that are shared in this shared, shared core, the kernel, networking, multimedia. One of the areas that we've actually been doing code sharing for a while is in our number two platform feature, IE10. Once again this year, we will have the latest and greatest Internet Explorer built into Windows Phone 8, and that core HTML rendering and JavaScript technology is the same between Windows on your slate or your laptop or your desktop and Windows on your phone. It's the same rendering, which means that HTML authors, website authors, can author once, test on Windows PCs or laptops or or slates and know that the same markup in JavaScript will work on the phone. Of course, this year we haven't stopped in terms of its capability, and a few of the areas that we've added new benefits for uh, end users and web authors is for end users, we're including the smart screen anti-phishing technology that's part of Internet Explorer today. And I'll show you that a little bit later and talk about that benefit. For web authors, though, 
equally good for end users. The, the biggest change is our support for the HTML5 standard, filling that out even more, particularly this year, including touch support, and improving our JavaScript performance. In fact, our JavaScript performance has gotten so good that we are proud to show uh, the Sun Spider measurement. This is in milliseconds, so lower is better. Here's how Windows Phone 8's current builds of IE10 stack up against current phone competition. And these are no slouch phones. These are fast, powerful, dual-core phones in general here. And this is Windows 8 performing against them on similar dual-core hardware. So we're proud to see Internet Explorer technology from the line of desktop to laptop to slate to phone all improve and be part of the benefit that all our customers will get this fall with Windows Phone 8. Um, if you think about the web as kind of a platform where web authors are writing web apps and delivering applications to users, and the fact of the code being the same, creating benefit for those web developers, well, there's another class of developers that we have big, exciting news for as a result of the shared core. And that is native code developers. And in particular, thank you. Go ahead, it's all right. If you're a native code developer and you've been waiting for this, we're, we're happy to hear that you're happy. Um, the biggest effect that we think this will have on Windows Phone 8 is we're going to see some freaking killer games this year. And later on, you're going to get to see some examples of some of the work that's in progress. Um, but there are a whole lot of benefits that come out of a shared architecture between Windows on PCs and laptops and slates and Windows on the phone. Um, they both share DirectX. They both share common graphics drivers. And what this means is a game developer who authors an unbelievable, detail, rich, immersive, compelling game experience for the PC has a super easy port of their native game to the phone. And with our shared core, we're going to be scaling up the capability of that phone hardware. So you're going to see some beefy, powerful phones running some amazing games this year. Another scenario that's actually quite beneficial in our support for native code is portability. Um, we've gotten a lot of feedback from developers who have written some complex apps on iOS or Android using those platforms' native code capability. And today, it's more difficult than we or they would like to move those apps to Windows Phone. It's been a little bit of drag on us getting some apps. But with native code support, suddenly, portability becomes much more easy for developers with that kind of investment. The net of this, in our opinion, is that we will see more apps, we'll see bigger, important apps coming faster, and we're going to see some unbelievably beautiful and immersive games running on Windows Phone like, like no games we've seen before. Going back to sort of hardware, there's another hardware feature that we're enabling that spans benefit from end user to hardware vendor to developer, and that is support for native NFC. And I raise this as a comment as part of the shared core because our support for NFC isn't limited to the phone. The shared Windows core supports NFC hardware and enables NFC scenarios between phones and laptops, slates, and PCs. And later on, I'm going to give you a demo of some of the specific things that we're enabling both in our built-in experience and with third-party apps because of the great, simple, connectivity that's made possible via NFC. NFC is kind of a good segue to another good platform benefit, um, and that is Windows Phone 8 will include what we think will be the most complete wallet experience on any smartphone this fall. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what I mean and why we think this is going to be the most complete wallet experience. If you think about the goal of a wallet on a phone, our new wallet hub probably has the same goal as any other wallet on any other phone, which is to effectively replace the physical wallet that you might have in your pocket. And that physical wallet does a number of things. It stores your credit cards and your debit cards. It stores your membership cards, you know, your AAA or your frequent flyer. It stores things like coupons. It lets you take them out and pay for things. Our wallet does all of that. It both integrates third-party services into the wallet experience when you install a third-party app. So you have one place to go to see account balances, to see your frequent flyer information, or to pull a coupon out to redeem it. 
integrates that via a third-party app API. It also supports secure NFC payments. So if you have a phone with an NFC chip built in, and in our case, a SIM from your mobile operator that has a secure element, we call this a secure SIM, a secure SIM enables your phone to be scanned at point of sale so that you can use those cards in your wallet to make purchases and payments. Our wallet spans the full range of scenarios, including secure payment to third-party scenarios like your frequent flyer card. And one of the things that's interesting about this, as this area has developed within the smartphone face, sorry, within the smartphone area, we've seen Google with their wallet enable secure NFC payments by putting the secure element in the device. And an unfortunate side effect for that has been that some mobile operators have chosen to remove the Google wallet because the mobile operators themselves want to provision those secure elements and enable their customers to maintain their secure payment instruments as they move from one phone to the next. In general, the, the mobile operators prefer the model of a secure element on the SIM. And in many ways, that's better for end users too because it means easy transition from one phone to the next. Our model works with mobile operators to deliver secure element on the SIM, and that's different than Google's model. Like Apple's model, our wallet also provides for integration with third-party apps and services. I'm going to give you a demo of this, so everything I'm describing is going to make more sense when you see the real code in action. But before I get to that, I do want to transition over and let you hear firsthand from our lead mobile operator partner on wallet, and that is Orange in France. Orange has been a pioneer in this area, working on Wallet, and we've been partnering deeply with Orange to make sure we have the right technology and the right service infrastructure to deliver an experience that'll be delightful for end users. So let's cut to a video of Yves Metra from Orange talking about our Wallet. We have been the first one in Europe to deploy the NFC transaction system. You guys, you have been able to put in the same experience something very easy and very convenient for customers. You have also been capable to align your solution with a GSMA recommendation. And more important, you provide with a SIM secure element of operator an incredible secure solution. Wallet Hub solution is exactly what developer needs in order to provide our customers a very friendly and a very safe journey towards their mobile transaction. Wallet Up Secure SIM solution is really the next step of the future mobile phone transaction. Let me wrap this up by describing how this wallet experience will come to market in terms of timing. First, every Windows phone will include the Wallet Hub. And whether your mobile operator has secure SIMs available or not, you still get all the benefit of third-party apps and services integrating with a wallet. Orange will be the first to market with secure SIMs at launch uh, on the Orange network. And we're working with a number of other mobile operators as well to get that same wallet experience on their networks. But they'll come later in time. In particular, I know many of you will have questions about the US. Um, as you know, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile have a joint effort in ISIS that defines how they do wallets and payments. We've been working together closely with ISIS. We're making good progress technically, and we expect to have a solution on ISIS sometime next year, but not at launch. This is the kind of thing that will come online over time as it requires mobile operators to build back-end services that match. We have great relationships, and we expect to see that fill out over the course of next year. OK, so I'm going to transition on to number six in terms of our eight platform announcements. And that is that Windows Phone 8 will include Nokia's mapping technology built in. <laughs> Glad, I, I think there are, some, there are some Nokia fans out there or people who live in countries around the world where they know the benefit of the Nokia map data. Um, one of the big things that's going to be an improvement as a result of this technology and platform change is Windows Phone around the world will have much better detail and complete local information in maps as a result of the Navtech map data that's built into Nokia's mapping layer. Uh, another great benefit is 
Nokia's maps work offline. So as an end user, you can choose a region of the world, store that map data on your phone storage, which you might have added via removable SD, uh, and then you don't have to worry about your having a connection to be able to use your map. If you travel to a place where you have a poor, poor connectivity, it's no problem, your maps are offline, plus you can have better performance and potentially save on data traffic. All of this is encapsulated in a map control which all Windows Phone software developers can use. So all of those third-party apps get the benefit of offline maps and Nokia's great mapping data. And then last, in our partnership with Nokia, Nokia is delivering turn-by-turn -turn directions, which will be included in Windows Phone in many countries around the world. And a little later on, Kevin Shields from Nokia will be out here to talk in a bit more detail about how that looks and how that works. So that is the number six platform benefit that's built into Windows Phone 8. Uh, on number seven, I'm going to address an audience that we really have not quite managed to address as fully as we would like. Um, unfortunately, for those of you who uh, have been exposed to this audience, you know that some IT administrators have been somewhat dissatisfied with what Windows Phone 7 has had to offer for their enterprise or business. There have been a number of gaps. We think we have them filled in Windows Phone 8, and Windows Phone 8 is ready for business. What are the gaps? Windows Phone 8 will support encryption and secure boot. So an IT administrator or an enterprise that's concerned about the safety of its corporate data on all those phones scattered around the world, they can rest easy knowing that Microsoft's well-known and proven BitLocker technology will be encrypting the contents of the device with secure boot enabled so your data will be very safe on a Windows Phone. Another problem that IT administrators have asked us to fix is to give them the ability to sign and deploy applications in their own way without needing to go through our marketplace. Windows Phone 8 enables IT administrators to set up their own line of business app deployment using whatever method they want and get their apps out to their end users in an elegant way that you'll see a little bit later in a demo. We also are enabling device management, so IT administrators can use familiar device management techniques and tools that they're already using today to manage Windows PCs, to also manage Windows phones. And of course, Windows phones are known for and will continue to be known for their inclusion of the familiar and excellent Microsoft Office apps that make end users' lives better and connect up to SharePoint servers so that you have a complete client to service experience in terms of your online documents. We've been talking to a bunch of IT folks and they're excited about this change. Later on you're going to get to see a demo and see more specifics where the, the shared core really has played a huge role in making Windows Phone great for businesses. We had waited until we could get to the point where that proven Windows technology would be part of our offering and this fall is the time. Now last, I got one more platform feature. And I have to admit, I'm going to be stretching a little bit here to call it a platform feature. I, I, you might want to call me on it, but that's OK. I, I want to get out there and do it anyway. Um, and the reason why is I'm an end user guy. And there's an end user feature that we've been working on, which really does have platform implications. Um, and it aligns with Windows 8. But from my point of view, it's an end user feature. And it's frankly, I think, the sexiest thing in Windows Phone 8. You may disagree, it's my opinion. Uh, but I want to show it to you. And I think it's something that none of you have seen, it, have seen so far. Um, we're changing the start screen. And for us, this is a big deal because the start screen is sort of the core of the Metro experience. So let me take you on a tour of what's going to be new here for end users in the new start screen. It starts with a tile. Uh, our tiles are special because they're alive. They're a way to see things about your data that's constantly changing. And these live tiles are the heart and soul, in our opinion, of Windows Phone. The tile is a simple and elegant thing, but it's really powerful and no other phone has these tiles. When someone starts putting their stuff into one of our phones, it officially becomes their phone from the inside out. 
in a more profound way than any other smartphone does. It literally gets powered by their passions and interests, by their likes and their loves, and the things and people they care about most. When someone, we know that our users really love their phones, and we think the biggest reason is that live tiles make the phone so special and so personal. It's like a unique fingerprint that reflects each and every part of them. These live tiles are essentially the face of Windows Phone, and in Windows Phone 8, we're going to make that face more beautiful and even more personal. So I am pretty happy to introduce to you today the new Windows Phone 8 start screen. Our users have told us they want it to be more customizable and personal, and we've listened. We're putting people in total control of their live tiles. Now, not only can they pin the stuff they want, whether it's a person or an app, they can also set the size of any tiles. If they're really into text and SMS, they can make the messaging tile really big. If they're not so into email, you can shrink the email down to a small size so you can not have to deal with as many large things on your screen. If you're a power user, you can get lots of apps and tiles on your screen and reduce the amount of scrolling that's necessary, and all of those tiles are still live. No other phone can do anything like this. The result is that Windows Phone is even more personal than it has been in the past, and that's pretty darn personal. So now people won't just be buying a phone, it'll be Tom the music lover getting a music lover phone, or Laura the social butterfly getting a social butterfly phone. There's Anna the bookworm with her bookworm phone, and Dave the sports nut with his configured for sports phone. Uh, Robin the news junkie has her news junkie phone, and Mike Jones, the accountant by day but gamer by night, has his precisely Mike Jones phone. It's the best of what Windows Phone is today, and we're building it to be even better. Exactly, precisely, and deeply personal for you. So now that you've seen their phones, I want to give you a demo of my phone. So I'm going to walk over here. Thank you, actually. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to walk over here and start a demo of Windows Phone 8. And so uh, what you see on screen here, this is my Windows Phone 8 device. I'm going to unlock it. There's my new start experience. Um, let me tell you a little bit about what I am showing you. For those of you taking photos, I want to let you know this is prototype hardware. It's an engineering device built by Nokia. It's not ID that will ship, um, although it does contain the technology guts that we're lighting up with the new Windows Phone 8 platform. This is a dual core device. It ha has a high resolution screen. It has NFC built in. I'm going to show you many of those things. Um, let me go over here. I also have a Windows 8 slate. Let me unlock this. And I will tell you this Windows 8 slate is also not any particular uh, hardware. This is not a Surface. Our Surface devices have all been in LA for the Surface launch that just happens, and so we don't have any of them here today. You're looking at a standard uh, Samsung Windows 8 slate here. Um, but let me talk about this live tiles thing just for a little bit. The intent in our changing the live tiles support in Windows Phone 8 was not just to make live tiles more personal, but to give a consistent experience between Windows 8 live tiles and Windows Phone 8. So as a, as a matter of example, those of you who have used Windows 8 are familiar with how this works. I can choose any tile as an end user and do customization like making those tiles smaller. And of course, as you'd expect, I can choose any tile and I can move these tiles around on the screen um, as you've seen on Windows Phone as well. It's the idea of putting the user in control of their tiles. And similarly, I can now have control of my tiles on the phone. So I'm going to go through a few simple steps here and show you exactly how this works. So like you saw in the video, first thing I'm going to do is I'll go into customization mode, same as today, press and hold, and I'm going to increase the size of my messaging tile, just as you saw in the video. It's as easy as touching that resize arrow there. I like that tile big because I'm into uh, texts. So now what I'm going to do is switch over here and change the size of the phone tile. I'm going to make it small. Of course, it stays live in its small size. And I'm going to put it into the space I vacated with the messaging tile. Now I'm going to scroll down here and start to emphasize the people in my life that I care about most. 
So I'm going to make Terry big, maybe not that big. Uh, we'll choose the happy medium size for Terry so I can see when he's bugging me with texts or messages or emails or calls. Then I'm going to take my Skype tile that got orphaned down here and slide it up here into the offset layout position. You can see how I've got my medium tiles offset if I like a little bit more of an alternate uh, perspective on life. I'm going to go down here to the me tile, same me tile you've seen today, but I'm going to shrink it to the small size because I already know what I am up to. I don't need to use more space on myself. And I'm going to take the number one most important person in my life, my wife Christina, and slide her up here into the pole position. So as she does Facebook posts, LinkedIn posts, sends me texts, calls me, I'm going to get all of those notifications right there on her live tile at the top of my screen. Very straightforward, consistent with, wind, what, with what Windows Phone users are already doing today, but enables much more personal layouts and capability. And by the way, for those of you that have asked for more colors, we're delivering more colors too. Um, now let me scroll down and you'll see down here at, towards the bottom of my start menu, I've taken advantage of this to maybe add a little bit more personality in, the, in, in my own phone's layout. Up there at the top you can see I've put pictures of all my kids, I've got, some, I've got a little games area I set up with the games hub and some uh, third party apps and games I've posted. And one of the things I want to point out in particular, if you look at the Groupon tile or these two uh, weather tiles, these are current Windows Phone 7 5 apps that are unmodified and installed and running as part of Windows Phone 8. And their live tiles, which were originally authored for a different size, are running and look terrific on this high-res screen with a different tile size. So all that application compatibility is part of Windows Phone 8, including live tiles in the new new start experience. But what I want to show you is, here's an example of an app that's been updated to support the new live tile sizes. In particular, that's Nokia Drive. You can see here I've got the Nokia Drive uh, tile in small size, but when I resize, I can go to a full large size tile, and now the app has a much bigger canvas for giving me notifications or graphic information, and we've made this API set much more rich, so software developers can do even more interesting things on Windows Phone 8 than they could on Windows Phone 7.5. I can also resize that to the medium size, and one of the things you see here, the tile changes its display to match the size I choose, and when I'm done with that, I'm going to put it back to the small size so I maintain the visual integrity of my layout for the rest of the demo. The point is it is a platform feature, and it's one that we think software developers are going to be thrilled to put new benefit into and give end users great new ways to learn about the features and benefits of their apps and be drawn into using their apps even more. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is um, some parts of that core technology platform and show you a little bit about how the developer experience and end user experience is improved by that code that is in common between Windows Phone and Windows PCs. So the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, go down and open the Terry Meyerson tile, where you can see Terry has been communicating with me a bit. Uh, if I scroll down, you can see um, there's an email he sent me, is this real? Well, let's take a look at this, because I want to talk about IE10 and the shared core parts of IE10 and how the IE10 user experience takes advantage of its scale across the PC and the phone. So here's Terry sending me this mail. Hey, Joe, do you think this is real? It's from probably not Bill Gates at contosomail.com. Subject, $1 million. I found this site that lets you instantly sign up to win $1 million in cash. Now, Terry is actually a moderately tech-savvy user, as you might expect, running the Windows Phone group. Um, so it's not likely that Terry himself would be duped into clicking on this link and have some malicious website do something to him. But unfortunately, there really are a lot of people who click these things, and it causes incentive for people to create more of them. And I happen to know this as a fact because people in my family really do send me emails like this asking me this question. Sorry, Mom, that's true. Uh, but what happens in Windows Phone 8, because of IE10's huge network of end users, is that when I click the link, IE10 detects that this website has been reported on as unsafe. And actually, I'm going to launch a similar website on my Slate so you can see the consistent experience that happens on the phone, on the Slate, on the laptop, and on the PC. 
This is the network of all of those devices with common code and a common service protecting the user against malicious sites that seek to steal their identity or do other kinds of bad things with their personal information. And now that benefit goes from Windows on the desktop or laptop or slate to Windows Phone in Windows Phone 8. The next thing I want to show is an example of how that shared HTML and JavaScript component tree makes websites incredibly performant and compatible between the phone and the Windows PC. So I'm going to scroll down here where I've got a site uh, set as a live tile. This site is called the Fountain of Apps. This is an HTML5 site that takes advantage of the new HTML5 support in IE10 on the desktop and on the phone and gives the user an awesome visual high performance look at the apps that are now available in the Windows Phone marketplace. And one of the cool things about the HTML5 support that we're getting from the, this shared code and that's implemented in Windows Phone 8 is its support for touch events. So you can see as I touch on this, there's this cool 3D visualization I can do and spin the fountain around. I can let it run again, spin the fountain around, and it's very smooth fast and fluid, high performance. It's that hardware acceleration that you've seen from IE10 with HTML5 Canvas implemented as part of the shared core componentry on the phone as well. And that shared, core, shared code componentry gives benefits because the same technology runs on the PC as well. The next thing I want to show, having talked about IE as a means for web developers to create websites on common code, is to talk about application writers and how they can take advantage of that common code to make it much easier to target apps for both the PC and the phone. And actually, in this case, I'm going to start on the Windows 8 slate. And what I'm going to do is move over here. We've installed, if you look right here, I've got a tile for the Windows SDK DirectX Marble Maze game. This is a game sample that ships as part of the Windows 8 SDK. It's been in the SDK for a while. Those of you who are developers and tried the SDK have seen Marble Maze already. I'm going to show you how this looks. Um, it's a game that uses DirectX. So you get all the hardware accelerated benefits of DirectX. There's textures. It uses the accelerometer for motion. It's pretty straightforward. Here it is running on my PC. And many of you have seen this already because it's part of the SDK. But what I want to show you Whoops. What I want to show you is that same SDK sample moved with incredibly small code changes to run on the phone as well. And so here I am with Marble Maze on my phone. And you know, the exciting news is that it looks just like Marble Maze on the PC, and it plays just like Marble Maze on the PC. And it was an incredibly easy effort to take that SDK sample and get it running on the phone in a high-performant, ultra-smooth kind of way. And the reason why is that the same DirectX componentry graphics support exists on the PC and the phone. It's so easy for developers to move because all the complicated parts of their apps just work. The things that you need to consider in moving from one device to another is really the form factor change. There's a smaller screen. You have to think a little bit about touch resolution. In the case of this Marble Maze game, because it's based on the accelerometer, there's really almost no changes made. So suddenly, with Windows Phone 8 and that shared core, taking an app from the PC to the phone, very straightforward. And what I'm going to show you in a little bit is going the other direction. Uh, but before I do that, I want to transition into talking about some more of the hardware support that is enabled through the shared core on both Windows Phone 8 and on Windows 8 PCs and slates. And that is our support for NFC. So let me uh, look under my uh, podium here, because I have uh, the April edition of Wired Magazine. This is the real April edition. We didn't do anything to change it. This is a bookmark. So I could flip quickly to the Lexus ad here that was part of Wired Magazine. And what's interesting about this Lexus ad is that it, it's an NFC-enabled ad. So I can take my Windows phone, and what I'm going to do is simply touch it to the paper here, watch the screen up there on the phone. Voila, the phone has detected the ad. It says, would you like to receive content? Someone is sharing a website from GQ.com with you. 
I'm going to ignore that right now. You've seen the browser already, but trust if I clicked accept, you would see the website. Instead, what I want to do is broaden your thinking about what kinds of scenarios NFC can enable. That's a simple one, and that one will work across phones. So it really is rational for people to put those NFC tags in places like magazine ads. But imagine lots of other things. Imagine you're in your mobile operator store with a poster of apps, each one of which is an NFC tag. You can touch one, it provides a link to our marketplace to open the app. Or you're in a bar with a sign that says, you need to get a cab, tap here to text, or, or make a phone call. We can execute those things as well. And what I have here in my hand is a business card. Uh, this business card belongs to John Scoverin, who is the group program manager responsible for NFC. And what you could predictably imagine that our, our uh, real world uh, leader has done is put an NFC tag into his business card. So if I take his business card and just press it to the back of my phone here, you'll see the phone pops up and says, receive content. Someone is sharing a contact with you. I can choose accept. In this case, I'm going to actually show you how this works. And there's all the contact information that was stored in that NFC tag, very easily found by Windows Phone, detected. I click accept. And now I can go down here and just click save. I'm going to tell Windows Phone I want you to save this in my Windows Live contact store so it's available when I use the web. Um, here's all the data. If John were here with me now, I'd click add photo and take his picture, but he's not. So I'll just save it as is. And now I've gone from a real world business card to my connected cloud in a matter of like two clicks. Very easy, very straightforward, really making those kinds of tasks super simple for people. And now that I have that content on my phone, I want you to think about my ability to use NFC to move things from my phone to other devices. I might move them to other phones, or I might move them from my, my phone to my PC. So what I'm going to do here is pop up down in the bottom of my contact card. We have a menu item called Share Contact. And we've had this sharing, I'm going to confirm that I want to share this. We've had this sharing menu for a while. It exists in lots of places in Windows Phone. You can share a photo. You can share a website. There's lots of things you can share. And what's new is the consistent addition of tap and send to our sharing command. So tap and send now becomes a universal way to share stuff on Windows Phone with any other device. I'm going to choose tap and send. And what you'll see right up here, Windows Phone tells you how quick and easy it is to tap your phone to another device. And what I want you to do is watch my Windows 8 slate up there in the upper right. Imagine that my wife has borrowed my Windows 8 slate, or I just want to do a quick transfer here to someone else. I'm going to tap my phone to the back of the slate. Keep your eyes on the... Gonna... There we go. It says, receive content. Tap to receive content from another device. And the experience is the same basic idea. I get notified, I can accept, and in the interest of time, I'm not going to go through that on the Windows 8 slate. In, rest assured, you can do that with many content types. It makes it straightforward for end users to share things with each other or transfer to their own separate devices. Uh, but what I want to show you is how, not only how our built-in software experience makes these kinds of transfers easy, I also want to show you how a third-party app can take advantage of all this. So what I'm going to do is launch an app. And I must tell you in advance, this is the riskiest part of my demo. Keep in mind, I have prototype hardware and an unfinished software build running on two different devices. So this might not work, but we're going to give it a try. Um, this, I, I'm launching this game called Spell It. And I want to tell you the story of Spell It. Um, we've been starting to communicate these platform features to uh, some of our ISVs, getting people to try them out and give us feedback and help to get some demos done so we could show them at an event like this. And we reached out to the authors of Spell It. This is a, a real app in the Windows Phone marketplace today. We reached out to these authors and said, hey, are you guys interested in trying to change your app for this event? This was about, I think it was about 10 days ago. They said, sure. And in two days of work, they took their Windows Phone app and ported it to Windows 8 and added support for NFC. So what I've got here, I've run Spell It. I'm going to click New Game. And once I click New Game, I can start a game with somebody else by taking my phone. Imagine my wife is using this slate here. I'm going to touch this to the back of my slate. And up there, same spot, upper right, it says Start an App. Tap to start Spell It. 
So I'll click right there, and what's happening is Spellit is launching a session. It's creating a connection over peer-to-peer -peer Wi-Fi. So if I were in the middle of the woods, this scenario would still work. Um, it's created a game. Over here on the slate, I'm going to tap to join the game. And under the pressure of all of you, all 500 of you watching me, I'm going to form my first word here, dank, which will give me an awesome score of, what is that, eight plus a bonus. I'll click play, and voila, dank shows up on the Windows 8 slate. Now, the operative fact, in my opinion, is that a developer who already had an app in the Windows Phone marketplace, that app would run fine on Windows Phone 8 in two days of work ported the app to Windows 8 and added a peer-to-peer -peer device scenario, greatly enhancing the capability of their app and making end users a lot more happy in the process. And it's a great illustration of how that shared core lights up benefits for developers, but for end users too. And it's a good example of how the new hardware support in NFC makes everyday scenarios a lot easier. Now, the last thing that I want to show in my demo is the wallet. And I want to give you a look at how the wallet spans a wide range of features and scenarios. So I'm going to scroll down here where you'll see I've got my wallet tile. And I'm going to open up the wallet and show you in, on my personal phone how the wallet is storing a bunch of stuff that I would ordinarily store in the real wallet I'd carry in my pocket. And uh, what you see here is two lists of things. At the left, there's an all list of a whole bunch of different uh, kinds of payment instruments and membership cards. And at the right is a list of deals. Think of the deals area as a folder for the coupons that you might have cut out of the paper, but now it's digitally stored. Um, let's take a look at these in, in some more detail. I'm going to come back here to the all list. And you can see I've got things like a Chase credit card. Um, that's a credit card, and it says there, app purchases. I've got my Chase Premier Plus card. That's a debit card that goes with my checking account. My Delta Sky Miles account, my PayPal, my San Francisco Public Library. And what I'm going to do is give you a look inside some of these. Now, what you're actually seeing is our wallet UI. And this UI gets lit up with data coming from those apps and services because a third-party app got installed on the phone. Part of our platform is a means for a third-party app to expose its data and web service content through the wallet in a very straightforward way so a user can go to the wallet and see a summary of the benefit from all these things. And when I open the, the Chase Premier Plus card, you can see here it gives me information about things like my balance. My checking account here has uh, $1,300. There's my, the phone number I can call if I need to talk some, to somebody. If I pan over, we ping the service and pull down a history of transactions. So you can easily check to see whether transactions that are happening are ones that you made. And then back here at the upper right, you'll see a message coming from Chase that says, I've got a quick pay request from Kim Abercrombie. It's a way of that app or service notifying me of important things anytime I glanceably go to the wallet. So what I'm going to do is tap that, which launches the Chase app. Now, I know for some of you Windows Phone users in the audience who are also customers of Chase Bank, you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, there isn't a Chase app in the Windows Phone marketplace. There soon will be, and what we are showing is an early sample of that Chase app under development. We're working with Chase to bring their great range of customer benefits like quick pay, like scanning checks and being able to deposit them as part of a native Windows Phone app that will be available later this year. But what you're seeing here is a sample. I can tell there are some people who are Chase customers that are looking forward to that. Uh, what you're seeing here is a sample of how that app integrates directly with the wallet. I could use Windows Phone's already existing deep linking to connect from the message straight into the Chase app area where I might accept the request from Kim to do a Chase Quick Pay. And right now I'm not going to do that. You get the idea. The wallet connects to third-party apps both by displaying some of their data and by giving users rich links between the wallet experience itself and the apps. So now what I want to do is go back here, and I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about how the wallet works with deals and what deals are about. 
As I said, imagine that deals in your wallet is a, is a section of your wallet where you put coupons, except these are digital coupons, and you could get them from a whole bunch of different sources. And a little later on, I'm going to show you how you get those coupons. But first, um, you notice here my, my deals are sorted by expiration. I've got a deal at Brownies Hardware to get hardware for to get $30 worth of hardware for only $15. And because that's at the top of the list, it's prompting me that I might want to take care of it. When I open this up, you get a sense for how these deals enable redemption. In this case, the Brownies hardware deal includes a QR code. I can simply open my deal card, show up the point of sale terminal, have them scan my phone, and get my $30 worth of hardware for just $15. It brings these things together in one place where users can store them just like they store them in their real wallet. Now, let me walk you through how I might use the wallet in a more complete scenario and actually obtain things like deals in the real world. So I'm going to scroll down here and uh, choose my San Francisco Public Library card. Imagine I have finished my demo and talk today. I can finally relax. I'm going to head to the library, find something nice to read, get my book, scan my library card barcode as I check out my book in the real world. I'm going to exit the library and say, man, I need to find a great place to sit down and enjoy this book. So I'm going to touch right here in my library card on the library's address and bring up the new mapping that's enabled via Nokia Maps. There you can see uh, the mapping support. And I'm going to touch the local scout uh, button here. Those of you familiar with Windows Phone 7.5, you're familiar with local scout, which takes a neighborhood or an area and suggests things like places to eat and drink. And what you see here looks like the old local scout, although I'm going to point out one difference, which is that as I pan down this list of places to eat and drink, many of them have deals. And that's the, that's the line there in white at Cafe Sapore that says $3.29 beers on tap. This place is rated four and a half stars. I can click it. I'm going to look at the place card, which gives me information about this, helps me find it, get directions, and so on. But what I want to do, actually, is tap that deal, because that deal seems interesting to me. And now I've opened up something that's new in Windows Phone 8, the deal card. The deal card is like a representation of a digital coupon. Here you can see this deal. I can go down here and share it with other people. I can pin it to my start menu as a tile. But what I'm going to do instead is right up there at the top, you see it says save for later. I'm going to add it to my wallet. I click that. Now that deal has been saved in my wallet. And if I use the phone, navigate around, and then later on, I'm going to imagine that I've showed up at that coffee shop and it's time for me to redeem my deal. I click on the wallet, pan over, and there's my Cafe Sapore item down at the bottom of the list. And I can redeem it in one of the ways as I showed you earlier. Pretty straightforward. These deals can be found in web searches, in place cards. They can be handed from one person to another. They can be part of what a third-party app offers. And we think they're a real beneficial part of the wallet feature that's part of the new Windows Phone 8 coming this fall. Now, the last thing I want to show in Wallet is how the wallet takes all your financial information and it uses it for financial transactions that happen on the phone. As I mentioned, you could use it for financial transactions in the real world, but I don't have a device today with a secure NFC card to show a real world payment. So instead, what you're seeing is all the benefits you get if you don't yet or your mobile operator does not yet have one of those SIMs. Um, I'm going to go into settings here because as the place where you would store all your financial information or your financial transaction cards, one of the things that makes sense to do is for the wallet to have a pin. So I'm going into wallet settings and I'm going to add the ultra secure pin 1111. Don't tell anyone. I'll try hard not to lose this phone. Um, and I'm going to check the box to use the wallet pin to protect any purchases that I make on the phone. So now, if I try to access my wallet or if I try to go to the marketplace and buy an app, I have to put in the wallet pin. If I'm one of those people that doesn't want to have a pin for my whole phone, but I don't want someone who's borrowing my phone to be able to actually buy things, I can now use the wallet pin to do that. And I want to give you, I want to show you how this works in a real example. But in the process of doing that, I'm going to show you something else that's new in the platform for Windows Phone 8. So I've gone here and launched an app from a company called Inrix. Uh, Inrix offers a service that gives you information about real-time traffic. 
And what you see here is uh, traffic in the area. And Inrix is a free app in the marketplace. But what Inrix is doing in this example of their Windows Phone 8 version is take advantage of a new platform feature we're enabling for software developers to enable in-app purchasing using our purchasing backend and the wallet. So right there, you see a menu item for upgrade to Inrix Pro. I'm going to choose that, and now our platform UI is being displayed. Inrix has called out to Windows Phone and says, hey, can you make a transaction for me in the following amount? Now, I just put a pin on my wallet, so before I can buy the Pro version of Inrix, I've got to put in my wallet pin, and here's our wallet UI giving me the option to confirm this purchase, it's $24.99 for Inrix Pro, and to choose which card in my wallet I want to use to pay for this item. You, you saw in the wallet screen itself that Chase credit card was marked with an item that told that it's being used for purchases on the phone, and there you see it showing up as the default. I'll click Buy. We contact the service, we validate the payment, uh, and voila, I've now upgraded, as you see in the upper left, from Inrix Basic to Inrix Pro. And all of the work that we've done to enable great payment methodologies, whether it's credit cards or mobile operator billing, translates in benefit to third-party apps who use this in-app purchasing capability. Um, we actually think this is a pretty big deal because if you think about the kinds of ways that mobile developers are monetizing their apps today, in-app purchase is a big one, and it's growing. And we think that once we enable this, we'll see the rate of apps in our marketplace continue to increase as we give developers this next very important way to monetize their investments and get a return on them on Windows Phone. So that wraps up my live demo of actual working Windows Phone 8 code. Um, I do have one more thing that I want to show in conclusion uh, as part of my demo. Uh, but this is a video. And what it is, what we tried to do was write some real code. So what you're going to see in the video is not fake mocked up stuff. This is a real app that we wrote both for the phone and for Windows 8 that shows how a software developer can solve a real world problem for a family using the shared core between the phone and a slate. And so uh, I'm going to show you the experience that a family might have as they go out to lunch at a local cafe. Let's run the video. Thank you. So that concludes my quick tour of the new platform capabilities in Windows Phone 8. And 
obviously the most significant thing that Windows Phone 8 has a shared common core with Windows 8. And I hope you got a good sense of what this is going to mean for our end users in terms of hardware support, for our software developers in terms of ease of porting and new capabilities, and for the hardware vendors and MOs who bring these devices to market. Um, for us, this is a huge release. This is a huge year. Uh, it's been fun for me to show all this to you. And what we're going to do now is give you sort of a double click, a look at these things in more depth. We're going to get into some more technical specifics. So for those of you who are developers in the audience, you're going to start hearing a little bit more of the depth you're looking for. And with that, let me introduce Kevin Gallo and bring Kevin Gallo on stage. Kevin runs the developer platform part of our team, and he's going to take you on the technical tour of everything I showed. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks, Joe. You've just seen a few of the exciting features coming to Windows Phone 8. I have the privilege of kind of taking the covers off a bit, showing you kind of nuts and bolts, and kind of explaining how it all works. So what I'll cover today is first, I'll give you a technical overview of our shared Windows core, then I'll give you an early preview of some of our developer platform features, and then I'll talk about our new platform for enterprise and business customers. So first, let's just dive right in and start talking about what's in this shared Windows core. First and foremost, Windows Phone 8 is based on the state-of-the-art Windows 8 kernel. This gives us increased scalability, like the multi-core support that Joe talked about, as well as proven robustness with billions of people using Windows all the time. Because we have the Windows kernel, we also now share the Windows device driver model. This is incredibly important to our hardware partners. It allows them to focus and build a single driver. What this means is, for example, if they need to build a video driver, they can spend all of their resources and energy optimizing it, tuning it, and thoroughly testing it, making sure it works well with battery, and they can use that video driver on their desktop PC, their laptop, their tablet, and now their phone. It allows them to smartly use their resources and get better hardware to market faster and with higher quality. Also, we now have the hardware-based security of Windows. End users will never regret installing an application because they know that that application cannot affect other applications on the system or their other app's data or the system itself. Now, you may regret installing an app or buying an app because it wasn't very good, and I really can't help you with that. But at least I can, be, I can assure you it won't hurt your phone, and if you remove it, it's gone. But you're out a little bit of money. Your content is also under your control. Whether it's your photos, videos, music, contacts, you are always in control of your content, and you share it when you choose to share it, and you let the apps that you want to have access to it, access it and use it in the way that you choose. Also, for our networking support, we now support the industry standard IPv6 and NFC, as Joe showed, to support things like tap to share. And with the Windows shared kernel, we get improved to Bluetooth support. Windows Phone 8 is built on hardware accelerated direct 3D for graphics and for media foundation and media foundation for audio and video playback and record. This allows the highest fidelity experiences possible on modern hardware. Because we share the same building blocks of our developer platform, developers can now share more code between Windows and Windows Phone. This includes native code as well as more .NET code. We now have the same .NET engine that runs on the Windows desktop. Now, we also have this feature we're calling Compile in the Cloud. As part of taking on this .NET engine, we enable, you know, basically what happens is when developers publish their applications to our marketplace, we will compile them in the cloud to machine code, and then when an end user installs that application, it'll start faster and run faster. Developers do not actually have to do any work we do this all for them after they submit the application to the marketplace. Everyone in the Windows ecosystem benefits. Consumers, developers, and especially our hardware partners. 
Now I want to transition and give an early preview of our developer platform. Just a few of the features give you a taste of what's coming. So first, I'll talk about native code in detail. Then I'll talk about some multitasking improvements. I'll introduce our new speech platform. And then I'll talk about how developers can target and build applications for Windows 8 and for Windows Phone 8. As Joe said, Windows Phone 8 now supports native C and C++ code. This is a big deal for developers. First and foremost, it enables the most amazing games. Whether they're casual games or full-on 3D games, most are written in native code. Developers do this for a few reasons. First, they get access to low-level APIs, like Direct3D, for basically the fastest graphics. They also can write high-performance code for the most realistic gameplay. Developers also have the ability to use gaming middleware, which mostly are written in native code, either they're full-on game engines or libraries for physics, animations, or audio effects. I am proud to announce today the following gaming middleware partners are coming to Windows Phone 8. Please join me in welcoming Andrew Bowell from Havoc, who is the head of product, to introduce to you the Havoc technology suite running on Windows Phone 8. Andrew. Hey. Thanks, Kevin. It's great to be here today and be part of the Windows Phone Summit. So Havoc is all about enabling three key capabilities for game developers. Firstly, immersive and truly physical 3D worlds. Secondly, interactive and highly realistic characters. And thirdly, jaw-dropping cinematic visuals. I'm really pleased today to announce that Havoc is going to be bringing its full technology suite to Windows Phone 8 and bringing these, game, game, these capabilities to game developers. Now, from a developer's point of view, Havoc is all about delivering heavily optimized code and technology on each of our target platforms. And with that in mind, the Windows Phone development environment has been a really great experience to work with. Firstly, the native code access has allowed us to take our C++ code base and bring it directly across and access the hardware in a way that allows us to deliver those platform optimizations. Secondly, the development environment with features like the PC emulator for Windows Phone, the DirectX 11 support, um, and of course, Microsoft Visual Studio 2012 has really just made it a really great experience. And it's something that really enables you to bring your games across to Windows Phone very quickly. Now, let's take a look at some of our cool technology running on Windows Phone.
some pretty cool capabilities. So we're really, really excited about that. Now let's take a look at some of, the, some of that technology actually running on device. That was a, a video showcase sort of showing the entire breadth of our technology. But I just want to give you a sneak peek at one of the apps, or one of the demos that we have running directly here on device. So this is an example of next generation character technology, specifically our, our cloth and deformable skin product here. As I move the camera around, you can see this guy's belly moving. And uh, what's really cool about this is this was a full fat asset, no pun intended, that we brought across from Windows, uh, our PC build, our console build. And really, we had to do very little to get this running on, on Windows Phone. In fact, I mean, it took us under three weeks to get this, this particular um, game, brought, this particular app brought over. Um, and it's really just a testament to the development environment and, and the ease uh, at which you could do that. Cool. OK, I'm going to leave it there and hand you back to Kevin. So it's been great, great to be here. And uh, look forward to working with you all on Windows Phone. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. I'd also like to announce that we have several early partners with us who are committed to Windows Phone and going to be delivering titles in Windows Phone 8. This is just a taste of the upcoming titles. We'll be announcing more in the coming months. In only a few weeks, Big Fish ported one of their most popular games from iOS to Windows Phone 8. And I'd like to show you that running on one of our devices. The game is called Fairway Solitaire. And so we showed some you know, high-end 3D graphics. Now I'm going to show you more of a casual game. So here I'll launch the application. And you can see it just comes up, lets me choose a couple courses. I'll pick one. And then here's a simple, you know, straightforward, solitaire game. And I'll start you know, playing this here. Um, like I said, I actually like games here. So I'm kind of getting good here, doing better. Now I'm, now I'm dead. Uh, then, yeah. Um, if I keep doing this, I'll just keep playing all day. Oh, well. Uh, sometimes I do better, sometimes I do worse. Oh, well. So, as you can see, it runs really well. And this was only done in two weeks, porting from iOS to Windows Phone 8. And I also want to show you another feature in here. They have a, they have a virtual uh, currency that they call Golf Bucks. And this is you know, something you can use to buy different things to play the game with. Uh, we're working with them to integrate this with our in-app purchase system so that they don't have to you know, worry about collecting money. Instead, end users have the ability to just reuse the same thing they use to purchase the app. They can go and use that to purchase golf bucks. And so it's another integration point to make it easier for developers to monetize their applications, and they have to do less work. Microsoft Windows Phone 8 provides a complete gaming platform. It enables more amazing games from the top publishers. Now, native code is not just about high performance in games. It's also about portability. Native code makes it easier to share code. You can share code between Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8. Also, many developers use native code to make it easier to port applications between iOS and Android. They can now use that same native code to e make it more easily port their application to Windows Phone 8. Developers also like to take advantage of native open source libraries. This reduces their costs and also helps them get to market faster. Let me show you how a developer can target both Windows Phone and Windows 8. Windows Phone and Windows 8 have what we call a shared native API set. And you see about nine technology groups that we highlight in here that are the same exact APIs on both platforms. A developer can build a shared C++ component on top of these APIs, and that component can be reused unchanged inside of both a Windows Phone 8 application as well as a Windows 8 application. This means that developers don't have to change that code. They build it once, they thoroughly test it, and they get all the value on both platforms. I'm excited to announce that we have ported the SQLite engine to Windows Phone and to Windows Phone 8 so that you, you basically, a developer can take the SQLite engine, just like I described, 
as a shared component and use it in both a Windows Phone 8 application as well as a Windows 8 application. So what they can do is go to SQLite.org, download one code base, and use it in both platforms. We have also added several multitasking capabilities to Windows Phone 8. I'm going to talk about two in particular. First, we have deeply integrated VoIP and video chat. VoIP is voice over IP, and also video support deeply into our operating system. This means that a VoIP call feels just like a regular cell call. But what do I mean by that? So imagine you got a Skype call. You get the exact same UI that shows up when you get a cell call. This is not emulated by the developer. This is our dialogue, and it also will run above lock. So they could simply hit the answer button, and they would go to the Skype application, and they would continue their call. Now, this also integrates with the features on the phone, like audio routing and, and answer above lock. Well, what is audio routing? This means that if you're using Bluetooth to either a headset or if you're using hands-free you know, in-car audio, it will just work. Developers don't have to do all of that coding or figure out how to thoroughly test it. It just works using the same functionality built onto the phone. VoIP apps will also continue to run in the background. So say you want to go look at a text message. You'll see that the same toast that shows up under a normal call is also showing up here while the VoIP call is going. And you can continue that conversation. Again, all the audio routing just continues to work. And then if you click on the toast, you go right back to the Skype application. Now, this is not just something available to Skype or to Microsoft applications. All developers get access to this built-in support, and they can build whatever applications they want to using voice chat or video chat now. The second feature in multitasking I want to talk about is background location. Location is a critical part of the experience on a mobile, window, on a mobile phone. Now we allow these applications that use location to run in the background. Well, let me give you an ex a concrete example of an application, which is a navigation application. So if I want to go find a restaurant, and it's kind of navigating me there, but I get a text message, and well, maybe they change locations. I want to be able to go to that and look at that text message, but continue to get directions so I don't miss my turns. And that will now work automatically for developers. They don't have to do any real work. If it's a location-based application, we will run it in the background, and they will continue to get that experience. Of course, they can always go back to the application and continue to get a visual navigation solution as well. And without any change, it will just continue naturally into the foreground now. We do this in a responsible way. We monitor battery as well as end user experience and make sure that the end user never gets a bad experience on their phone. Now, it's a little hard to show and demonstrate, you know, kind of, you know, moving location since I'm sitting up here and standing up here on stage. So we have a video that demonstrates background location with NRIX. Checking traffic first on this cool app. Oh, right on. There's been a serious accident on I-80 West. Would you like to use your alternate Market Street route? Sure. Your new Enrix arrival time is 6.02 p.m. Would you like to text Miles and let him know? Yes. Okay, text sent. Enjoy your drive. So, while we saw... <laughs> while we saw background location, 
we also saw one other feature in there, and that is speech. Speech has always been an integral part of the Windows Phone experience. Since Windows Phone 7, we have had the ability to launch applications using speech, something Siri is just now learning to do. However, we're not stopping there. We're going to take this to the next level. We've been working with Audible to help and see what they could do to speech enable their application. As you know, they are the internet's largest publisher of audiobooks. I'm not going to use one of our engineering devices, but for the developers out there, I'm going to give them a kind of a look at our new emulator that is built on Hyper-V and running on Windows 8. Audible, play Game of Thrones. Searching for St. Louis, Missouri. I'll try that again. <laughs> Audible, play Game of Thrones. Playing Game of Thrones. Next chapter. Heard you say next chapter. Somewhere beyond the sunset, across the narrow sea, lay a land of... Pause. Heard you say pause. So, as you can see, not only was I able to launch the application using speech, after a little glitch there, but I also was able to give it a command and control its behavior when I started it. Then, from within the application, you may not be able to see, but I was using UI in the application, I was able to give it a set of commands to control its behavior, like next chapter, and pause. But we didn't stop there either. We want to do something a bit more complex. Search. Heard you say search. What would you like to search for? Apollo. I found one result in your library. Failure is not an option. Mission control from Mercury to Apollo 13 and beyond. Would you like to listen to it? Yes. <clears throat> Given my aircraft test flight background, the con Pause. Heard you say pause. So, it may not have been as, as easy to see there, but I basically had a conversation with my app. I started it by asking it to search, and we continued with a two-way interactive conversation. This was not just with the phone, but this was with my application. And then I can continue to have that com two-way conversation, and I got to exactly what I wanted to without having to touch the screen. We are excited to see what developers have come up with, because this is available to every developer. We have the ability to have speech-enabled applications that can have conversations with each end user, and they can go and use their creativity to take this technology to the next level. As it's probably already showing on my screen here, we are excited to announce that Audible is going to be available for Windows Phone 7.5, that you can go to our marketplace and download it later today. Now I want to focus more on developers and tell them a little bit about what's coming in Windows Phone 8. First, thank you. Thank you for building great Windows Phone applications. We appreciate and respect and value the investment and time that you've put into building those applications and making them great. So Windows Phone 7 and 7.5 applications will run on Windows Phone 8. Also, this technology I talked about, compilation in the cloud, we are going to compile every existing Windows Phone application in our marketplace so that Windows Phone 8 end users get the benefit of every application being faster. And developers will not have to do anything. They don't have to resubmit their applications or do any work. It will just be done for them. Also, Visual Studio 2012 will support development for both Windows Phone 7.5 and Windows Phone 8 applications, and of course, they already support Windows, Phone, Windows 8 applications. This means, as a developer, you can go and use one tool to build for all the platforms that matter to you. We also believe in developer choice. We believe in one app model 
but allowing you to have the right technologies for the right parts of your application. So first, we will continue to support XAML, so you can build your Metro-style UI, and you can use C Sharp and VB code. We also now support native C and C++ code, and we will continue to support our HTML5 browser control that's based on IE10. But this is not a hard choice. We, as a developer, they have to pick one technology, and their whole app is in that one technology. Developers can mix and match these technologies. Let me give you a concrete example. If a developer is going to build a game, they may want the game UI to be very metroized, and so they would use C Sharp with XAML. But they want realistic gameplay, so they've decided to build that with C++ and DirectX. But they also want to say, hey, have a leadership board so they can show the high scores. But they have a website that does that. They can take that website and host it directly inside of their application. This allows developers to use the right technology for the right task inside of their application. and means that they don't have to change the code. They pick and choose a technology that's right for them. We also know that there are a lot of developers who want to build for both Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8. And we want to give a little bit of guidance to help make choices that will make that easier. We suggest one of two approaches for developers. First, if you're building an app, we recommend using XAML with C Sharp or VB code. As I've said, we now support the same .NET engine that exists on Windows 8, so it's easier to share more of your .NET code, C Sharp or VB. For your UI, we recommend that you optimize it for the screen size. So we recommend using Windows 8 Metro UI for Windows 8 for a larger screen size, and Windows Phone 8 Metro for building for our smaller screen size. For games, we recommend that you use Direct3D with C or C++ code. You can then take the application and target our shared native API, and any code in there will run identical on both platforms. You may choose to use different APIs that, are, that are, you know, allow you to customize the experience per platform, but you can also use a shared core to simplify development. Then you need to take into account the resolution scaling and use the right scaling. So if you're on a high-end desktop, you may use higher resolution assets, and on Windows Phone, use lower resolution assets because the screen is lower, smaller. For those who are building mobile-ready websites, we recommend that you optimize for IE10 but make sure you design for a mobile screen size. So let me make a transition and talk about our enterprise support. Windows Phone 8 is enterprise ready. But what does that actually mean? Well, let's talk about the fundamentals. Because in business, the fundamentals count. First, Windows Phone 8 has a complete security platform. From secure boot to full device encryption with BitLocker technology, companies can know that their corporate assets are safe on a Windows phone. We also now support a flexible app distribution model that is business controlled. Each enterprise can decide which applications and how they want in their, in their store and to their employees, as well as how to distribute those applications. They can use cloud infrastructure, they can use on-premise intranet support only. It is completely up to each and every, every company. We also will support device management for large enterprises. Today, we're introducing a concept that we call the Company Hub. This is really just an app, but it's an app that allows each company to personalize the experience for their employees. They control the app, they control the experience, but, eat, but they can actually decide which applications to highlight and to communicate. Now, let me make this concrete by giving you an example of what Microsoft's IT department has put together for Microsoft employees. Again, I want to remember, this is just an example. Every application, every enterprise can customize it in their own way. So as you can see here, I'm on my Start menu, so I'll click on my... No, I'm a Microsoft employee, so of course, I'm going to have Microsoft IT right here on my phone. So I launch my application. Comes up here, and they've decided the first thing to do is show me the apps that I've installed. And so I have a few apps here that I've installed, you know, some typical line of business applications. 
I can scroll over, and they've decided to highlight a few applications that I may want to install, like for taking time off. And then they have some headlines, just to give me some news from the company. And of course, like every IT department, you must have an alert center to tell me to change my password, or tell me to get an update, or some communication. They also have a self-service IT area where it kind of has my profile information. We have a feature at Microsoft that allows us to change our Outlook picture so we can customize it, you know, where everybody can see kind of a picture of us or some funny little cartoon or whatever we choose. However, it's tough to do it on an internet using a PC desktop. I don't always have a camera. You know, it's not really set up right. They can now enable this through our phone so they can get the advantage of making the work that they've done in our back-end infrastructure available to their employees in a way that's easy for employees to use that on our phone. So they can make it here. I got a camera. I can easily just change it and update it, and it's seen everywhere in Outlook. Now let me kind of show you installing an application experience. So I'm thinking maybe, you know, I've been here a couple days. Maybe I'll stay here and enjoy San Francisco a bit more. So let me do the uh, Microsoft time off and see how much vacation I have. So here you'll see, I clicked on it. It allowed me to present an install screen. For end user consistency, this looks like a standard install screen, but this actually is completely customizable by every company. So now I'll click install. The application will come. This is, all, this is not going through Microsoft's marketplace. Microsoft is not actually you know, our Windows Phone part of Microsoft has not been touched. It only goes to Microsoft's IT infrastructure. And now the application is installed. And I can just launch that and see, OK, do I have any vacation or not? Um, yep, I have enough. I think I'll take some time. Hey, Joe, I'm taking some time off in the next couple of days. So just there's an example of Microsoft's IT application. Again, I want to emphasize, that was just built by Microsoft's IT department. And we will provide a set of templates and guidance so that each company can customize that experience for themselves and decide how best to service their employees with their apps. There are six things that I want you to remember from our talk today. First, better hardware faster, because we have the same shared Windows core, which allows hardware partners to leverage and build optimized drivers. Two. Amazing games are coming to Windows Phone 8 because of native code support. We are improving our multitasking so you can get more out of your phone by being able to do multiple things at once. Talk with your apps. We are providing a complete speech platform to make apps go to the next level with speech. More ways for developers to make money with in-app purchase. And last, Windows Phone 8 is enterprise ready. Now, as a developer, I always want to know, when can I get my hands on code so I can play with it, look at it, really feel it, and know what it does. Later this summer, we're going to make available our SDK for developers to download. And we'll also have a series of developer events so they can learn in depth a lot more. I've only given a high level overview, but developers want a lot more nuts and bolts talk about how they write the applications and exactly what the APIs are, and they can attend those events. Thank you, and now I'd like to wel welcome Terry Meyerson back to the stage. There's so much to look forward to with Windows Phone 8. Well, let's talk about the hardware. When we launch Windows Phone 8, our first devices will be available from four hardware OEMs, Nokia, Huawei, Samsung, and HTC. All of their devices will be built on next generation silicon from Qualcomm. We've been working with these partners for some time, and I'm very happy to share that I believe we will have the best device lineup we've ever had before. And these devices will be available all over the world. Windows Phone 8 is a truly global platform. It will be available in 50 languages with an application marketplace that supports downloads in over 180 countries. For those of you keeping count, that is 25 more countries than Apple announced last week. 
And when we go into a country, we aspire to do much more than a translation. We aspire to deliver a deeply local experience to our customers there. Consider Arabic and Hebrew, where we have fully mirrored the experience right to left, unlike other platforms where there is only a translation available. And let's talk about software updates. This is an area where our entire ecosystem has been challenged. OEMs, operators, platform vendors, getting new software on devices has been a challenge. But we have been working with our partners on how we might do this. Is there a, can we find a path that really puts the consumer's interest first? And I believe we have found that with Windows Phone 8. The first step on that path, all software updates for Windows Phone 8 will be delivered over the air. There will be no more... <laughs> there will be no more searching for a USB cable to tether to your PC to update your device. Secondly, Microsoft will support every device with updates for 18 months from the launch of that device. At least 18 months. And last but not least, Microsoft will have a program that lets registered enthusiasts to get early access to updates before any broad consumer push. You put all, you put all this together, and I believe Windows Phone 8, Windows Phone 8 devices will be more up-to-date and fresher than ever before. Now, if you take into account everything that you've heard about today, we believe Windows Phone 8 will be the most modern so smartphone platform available. Windows Phone 8 supports new multi-core chips, new graphics cores, new multimedia cores, new modem architectures, new screen resolutions, removable storage, encrypted storage, NFC, and more. Windows Phone 8 is a generation change in our platform. And because of this, Windows Phone 8 will not run on existing devices. We care very deeply for our Windows Phone 7.5 customers. And because of this, I'm happy to share today that we are creating an update for our Windows Phone 7.5 customers that brings to them what we believe is the marquee feature of Windows Phone 8, the new start experience. And this is not all that Windows Phone 7.5 customers will get. To talk about their ongoing commitment to our Windows Phone 7.5 customers, I'd like to invite up on stage Kevin Shields, Senior Vice President of Nokia. Hey, there thanks Terry. Hey, good morning. Uh, my name is Kevin Shields. I lead product and program management for the Nokia Lumia range at Nokia. Wow, Windows Phone 8 looks terrific. You know, our Nokia Lumia customers have been and continue to be delighted by the, by the Windows Phone experience. And I want to thank Microsoft for the opportunity to be here today to participate in the next evolution of this great experience. At Nokia, we are excited about the new generation of hardware that Windows Phone 8 will unlock. We believe these advancements, these advancements will further, invest, for, further fuel investment in the Windows Phone ecosystem. And it validates our decision to partner deeply with Microsoft on Windows Phone. As Terry mentioned, this morning I want to tell you how we at Nokia will not only bring the best of our innovation to Windows Phone 8, but also, thanks in part to great application compatibility, to our existing range of Nokia Lumia devices as well. Today, Nokia is announcing a number of new applications and a wave of innovation for our current Lumia customers. Somebody about there needs to advance the slide for me. Thank you. These new experiences will come to our new Nokia Lumia devices starting next week and then progressively over the ensuing weeks around the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. They start with a DLNA app we call Play 2, 
Uh, Play 2 makes it easy for me to stream my photos, music, and personal videos to DLNA-compatible devices, including many big-screen TVs today. Nokia Counters is an app that responds to a big piece of feedback we've gotten from our Nokia Lumia customers that they really want an easy and intuitive way to help them track their data, voice, and messaging usage. We're releasing a new version of our highly acclaimed Nokia music, music application, the app that lets you play great streams of music uh, in really interesting mixes without any login or setup. It just plays right out of the box. And we're improving our gig finder to, to help you find live, live local performances for the artists you love most. And we're making it easier to create great mixes that you can download and play offline later. And of course, at Nokia, we continue to innovate on camera and, camera and imaging. Today, we are announcing four new camera extensions that we collectively call camera extras. They work together to effectively upgrade the core camera experience. These include a simple self-timer, an action shot extension that takes a burst of images and makes it really easy to step back in time to find the image that really captures the moment you wanted to remember. We're releasing a panorama maker that, that sort of playfully guides you through the process of capturing the perfect series of images that can be stitched together to create a beautiful panorama. And to, to, to help show you the last of our four extensions, I'm going to invite Joe and Kevin back here on stage to tell you about something we call Smart Group Shot. Smart Group Shot helps to solve the problem of when you take a picture of a bunch of people, a lot of times somebody's eyes are closed or they're not smiling, and you, what you really wanted was sort of a mashup of a set of pictures. Um, so what I'm going to do here is you can see our four, our four camera extras. I'm going to start up Smart Group Shot, and I'm going to use Tweedledee and Tweedledee Dumb here uh, to show you how this works. So with Smart Group Shot, I can start taking an image. Okay, guys, happy face. Sad face, surprised face, it smells bad face. Great. OK, thanks. Sm uh, Smart Group Shot captures a series of images and then processes these images to find faces. It then analyzes the faces to pick the best expression for each person in the picture. Finally, it assembles all of those images into a blend, into a single image that captures the, the best out of everyone. We built Smart Group Shot with a company called Scalato. Scalato is the company that did the Nokia, Nokia Creative Studio. We'll get back to that in a second. Uh, they built a Nokia Creative Studio that's available for the Nokia Lumia range today. We recently announced that our intention to buy or to acquire the people and technology of Scalato because of their expertise in image processing. It's that expertise that lets me do something like this, where I can tap Joe's face. Pick the image that I think most represents the moment, and now I get to remember this great standing up here on stage with Joe and Kevin. Okay, as Joe referenced earlier, Nokia is a leader in mapping and navigation as well. And today I'm happy to announce that we're bringing updates to all three of our core transportation and navigation applications. With Nokia Maps, we're, adding, we're making it even more personal by adding the ability to upload photos, to, 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 uh, to uh, submit place reviews, and even favorite synchronization. In Nokia Transit, we're, we're updating as well, and we're including the, a, a feature that lets you pin a location uh, to, to the start menu so that no matter where you are, you can quickly open it and find bus and train stations near you, including real-time, up-to-date timetables. And then finally, in Nokia Drive, we're, we've, we're, we're delivering a feature we call My Commute. My Commute is, uh, is a result of our team challenging the assumption that navigation is only useful when you don't know where you're going. We ask the question, how can we make everyday driving even better? And the answer starts here with this, this, this uh, live tile on the start screen. That, has, that shows Nokia Drive telling me that if I leave for work now, how long it will take me to get there on the fastest route. When I get in my car and start Nokia Drive, it actually shows me the set of commutes that, that it's learned from my driving habits over the last few weeks. It's actually observing where I drive and noticing that sometimes I take different routes to work. 
So here in this case, you can see my commute in Helsinki to Nokia House. And Nokia Drive is, is suggesting that I take the fastest route, which, ha which happens in, on this particular morning to be the shortest route. And you can see the, the yellow traffic data, which is actually live data in Helsinki right now. Um, but I can see at the top of the screen there's three different routes because Nokia Drive has learned that I actually use different routes in the way to work. And it turns out that the middle route is actually a prettier route. It's a, it's a nicer drive. It goes down the, what's called the Esplanade in Helsinki. And because I've left a little bit early and I know I have, to, uh, I have time, I can actually choose to take the not fastest route and be comfortable that Nokia Drive's got my back, that I'm going to be able to make it to work in time even though I'm enjoying my commute a little bit more. So in summary, uh, my commute in Nokia Drive makes my daily commute even more enjoyable and less stressful. Okay, so wrapping up, what you've seen here are proof points of Nokia's commitment to partner with Microsoft in continuing to innovate on Windows Phone 7X and our current range of Nokia Lumia devices. I want to thank Microsoft for inviting us to be part of this, this important event and the evolution of Windows Phone. With Windows Phone 8, Microsoft is clearly, clearly accelerating the investment in the growth of the Windows Phone, phone ecosystem. Furthermore, it's great, it's great to know that with strong application compatibility, the vast majority of ecosystem innovation will accrue to our current Nokia Lumia customers. And to that point, I'd like to welcome Terry back out here to tell us more about the momentum of what's going on with the Windows Phone application marketplace. Thank you. Quicker. All right, well, let's talk apps. As Kevin mentioned and Kevin Gallo mentioned, Windows Phone 7.5 applications will, continue, will run on Windows Phone 8 devices. And we will continue to invest in those applications for our Windows Phone 7.5 customers. But I'm very happy to share with you today that our marketplace has reached a milestone where there are now 100,000 applications that have been published to our marketplace. I want to personally thank every developer out there that has contributed some of their time and creativity to build an application for Windows Phone and to improve the experience for our customers. And frankly, we're really quite pleased with the pace by which marketplace applications are coming into our marketplace. This first 100,000 apps have come to Windows Phone faster than the rate they came to other smartphone platforms. Now, there's one, app, there's one application or set of applications in particular that I want to call out today that has recently committed to join us in the Windows Phone marketplace. And frankly, Nokia has been instrumental in helping to build the partnership to get these apps on our platform. And that is Zynga. Zynga will be bringing words with friends and draw something to Windows Phone users later this year. So let's recap our commitment to our current Windows 7.5 users. First, Microsoft will be releasing a seven-point update that we believe includes the marquee and user-centric feature of Windows Phone 8, and that is the new start screen to those customers. Secondly, our OEMs, as Kevin just showed for Nokia, will continue to innovate on their devices with great new experiences. And third, we are going to continue to invest in our application catalog for our Windows 7.5 users, leveraging the application compatibility between Windows 7.5 and Windows Phone 8. So Windows Phone 8 and Windows 8 together, we are going to bring amazing experiences on the most modern platform on amazing devices to our customers. We really look forward to working with our developer partners to embrace this new platform. Thank you for your time here today, and thank you for your support of Windows Phone. <laughs>